Joining me right now in welcoming the Ford Fairlane, about whom the adventures of Ford Fairlane is all about, Mr. Andrew Dice Clay. Thank you for taking this time out. No problem. Good to see you. How did this project come about for you? Because Ford Fairlane, the character, has been around for, for quite a while in, in comic strip form. And how did it, how did it come to you? Well, um, well, it was brought to me by uh, Joel Silver, actually, who didn't really know me well, but um, a manager of mine, Barry Josephson, and an ex-agent of mine, Carrie Woods, dragged them down to the comedy store one night to see me on stage, because they knew of the project, but, but Joel didn't know of me. You know, so he saw me, and after the show, we talked about it, and within the next few months, we were shooting it. You know, Joel Silver must be one of the brightest producers he in is. the business today. Because Believe me. <laughs> everything this guy produces seems to, to turn to gold. He breaks your back, <laughs> but he's a great producer. He yeah. breaks your back, but he makes great movies. All right. Once they tailored this, uh, this project for you, was it everything you had hoped it would be? Did you feel comfortable uh, yeah, with it? Yeah, because they got in everything I, I asked them to. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as I said, you know, put in there whatever I could do. If I could sing and dance, put it in. It was there. You know, and that, that's one of my favorite moments, to see something like that on screen. Sure. Yeah. You know. All right, how much of it was, was actually improvised? Uh, I got uh, the feeling that... A lot. Of it... I really didn't pay too much attention to the script, not because it wasn't well written. You know, Dan Waters did a great job, but mm -hmm. because I am a stand-up comedy, you know, performer by nature, and... Uh, I like to improvise, you know, and I like to put in, if I feel a line doesn't work and I have another line that I could push out that I think is going to have a little more, you know, pizzazz to it, I'll mm -hmm. do that. You know, yeah. there are a lot of people, though, who don't realize that there is such a difference between a comedy actor and a stand-up comedian, yet you're really mm -hmm. doing both. Yeah, I could do both. There's no problem with that. Yeah. yeah. How do you explain, let me get this question out of the way. Um, kind of earlier, how do you explain the the, the Andrew Dice Clay phenomenon? Because we I've know people at your concerts just go crazy. Well, I've, I've created a rock and roll comedic hero image. You know, so it's not like they're just going to sit there and hear joke, punchline, and laugh. I create an excitement in a crowd, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I like doing. You know, to get them excited, to make them laugh, you know, and just to, to release all, you know, that day-to-day -day stress that everybody goes through. Is that what it, what it is you think that's, that's happening out there? That oh, that yeah, sure. To? I mean, you get 18,000 people in a room laughing, there's a lot of energy happening. Yeah. You know, but that's also where it begins and ends, you know. Now, I read uh, that, um, that you used to, to, to study Elvis Presley, really, uh, that's kind exactly. of an influence. And that's what he was able to do. He was able to excite the crowd like that. He had the presence to walk out as one guy and take on 20,000 people and just drive them nuts. That's astonishing yeah. when you oh, think yeah. about Oh, yeah. There'll never be anybody like him. He's, you know, he was one of a kind. There's not a rock star alive today that could shine his shoes. Some of them think they can. Well, you know, you that's, know. I'm not saying there aren't any good ones, right. but, you know, they're mostly groups. Right. You know, I mean, one guy, um, George Michael, I mean, he, he's terrific. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like him. He's, I'm saying him because he's a single performer. Right. You know, it's not like four guys in a band, you know, but he, he's got that sex appeal. You know, he, he, you know, he's great. All right. You know, I enjoy him. When you walk out in front of 18,000, 20,000 people yourself, do, do you know immediately that, that you've, you've, you've got them or well, it they're take there a to see you, to... so if they just sit there, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking, what'd you buy the tickets for? But normally they just go nuts, Yeah. you know, and, you know, and I give them the show. Yeah. You know, I put on the, you know, I have certain jackets made that, you know, they're never going to see walking in the street, you know, and I have a certain style of comedy that, you know, just goes right inside them, you know. After this persona what about future films oh yeah I'll grow you know I'm gonna grow I'm gonna do more comedies I'll do dramas you know I'll do movies with a meaning mm -hmm. you know that say something you know something positive which regardless of what the press has said about me I'm a very positive person mm -hmm. you know I you know 
I didn't make it in show business by staying out all night and drinking and doing drugs, and I don't do it now. And you anybody the out there listening that thinks that's what it takes to make it and that's what's great, well, that's stupid. Do you like the press party? Uh, no, not really. That's good. See Ford Fairlane and have fun. That's, uh, that's, that's it, great. Ford Fairlane, comedy headed this summer. All right. Thank mm. you so much. You're welcome. Great. Okay. Torture you? I'm not going to torture you, Ford. Not her, Ford. But your best friend. A 1962 Fender Stratocaster with original pickups and maple neck and strung upside down for a left-handed genius, Jimi Hendrix. That's something else entirely. No! <laughs> Don't you guys think this guitar would look a lot better with Ford's name carved in it? Oh, come on! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Okay! 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 Oh, you guys are tough. Okay, you got me. All right, I got you this. They're in a very safe place with instructions that they be sent directly to the police. I don't make a call by 7 o'clock. So... If you'll excuse us. Well, it's 734. You really should get a watch. Kill him.